Okay, hi everyone. Thanks for coming. Thanks for uh, still sticking with us in the end of the day. Uh, I don't know about you guys, I'm pretty much still recovering from jet lag, so it's, I feel it, let's say. Uh, but I'm also very excited to be here today. So my name is Sana. Uh, I've been working with Huva for six months now. I've uh, been working in e-commerce for about a decade, so I've been around the block. Uh, and I'm super happy to be here today together with our partner, Aaron, from Zero Lag, and so, sorry, Zero One, and uh, Julia from um, Bar Display, our customer. So before we dive off, I thought it would be good to start with an introduction from Julia. Perfect. All right, well, my name is Julia. Um, I've been with Bar Display for about 15 years. And uh, Bar Display, if I'm shocked none of you have heard of it, um, but we sell retail store fixtures, B2B, um, since 1946. Um, so unless you're a store owner or you work heavy in retail, you probably don't even know the names of half of the things that we sell. Um, but I always start with, we sell mannequins. So if you need something <laughs> for a mannequin, I'm your girl. Um, we have over 4,000 different SKUs um, and just under 50 employees in four different brick and mortar locations. Um, and then we have a lot of third party locations around the United States, um, and then we do a lot on e -com. Uh, we have been on Magento since 2014. Um, when I started back in 2008, we were floundering um, and trying to figure out the best option. We did about four years on big commerce and saw some really good growth there, but didn't have quite all of the necessary things that we needed um, for 4,000 SKUs as far as shipping and um, being able to quote things accurately. So we started looking and thought, oh, Magento, it's open source. We could do all of these things. Look at all this amazing stuff, but got ourselves into a little bit of trouble because we got with a developer that didn't really know what Magento was. Um, so that's how we found Aaron. <laughs> and he saved us. <laughs> All right, that sounds good. So let's talk a little bit more about the challenges that you were facing, especially last year. Yeah, so last year we had a very busy year. Um, in Q1, we were consumed because we finally, finally had a capital project that we were able to change our ERP software over. Um, we had been in Microsoft Dynamics for years. It felt like we were stuck in 1982 and we couldn't you know, connect to Magento. We were still hard coding our web orders into the system every day. Um, and so that was painful. But we got on with Bright Pearl last year and everything went really smoothly, but me and my team of two, Megan, um, spent a lot of time figuring out the operational changes and how that would affect everybody. Um, and then in May, we decided, you know, we're not busy enough. Let's just dive in and buy a competitor too. Um, so we went and we bought a competitor that was about half our size. Uh, so that was kind of a bigger purchase. Uh, they were based in a totally new market for us, Atlanta. We're in Orlando, so it's not too far. Uh, but that was a whole shock and game changer too because we have to train new hires and get the operations flowing from distribution to making sure that we're selling things correctly and lining up the product line. <laughs> or a shot of vodka. <laughs> um, Anyways, uh, so we had a lot of things happening last year. Um, we have always had a successful web presence. Um, I think our best web sales revenue was over four million. Um, but last year we started playing with Pmax campaigns in Q3 because of the shopping changes and we're spending a ton of money with PPC. Totally missed that our website organic rankings just plummeted. Um, we weren't getting the traffic, we weren't getting the revenue. Um, and so we finally noticed that at the end of Q4, and I was like, Aaron, what can we do? What, what do we do? <laughs> so here he is again with his hero hat, <laughs> super cape on, and he suggested, uh, let's, let's look into Whova. Let's see what we can do with this theme change, because um, we saw some red flags along the way. So I'm done now. <laughs> Thank you. I made it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I guess it's one around of the pause. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Aaron, over to you, I guess. Please tell us a little bit about uh, who you are and what you do. Okay, so I founded um, Zero One in 1999, almost 25 years ago. 
as a, a web agency traditionally uh, working in the pharmaceutical sector, extranets, intranets, um, sidestepped into e-commerce in about 2008, worked with uh, OS Commerce for a, a couple of years and we launched our first Magento store on 1.3 in uh, I think 2009, uh, we became a Magento partner at that point. Um, we we quickly fell in love with Magento due to the you know the community momentum, um, you know, and everything that we were a lot, lots of, are here, of us are here today, you know, to experience. Um, at the time, we worked with all versions of Magento. There was once a version in the middle of community and enterprise called Professional. We had customers on Professional. I don't know if anyone remembers that. Um, most of our um, customers and our focus, however, is on really the, the community um, kind of package and the, the culture. Um, so we're committed to Magento open source primarily. Um, as a business, our kind of sweet spot, our kind of key selling point is really looking for the right merchant relationship where you can kind of um, provide that the right level of resistance, I think, for customizing the platform when is best. Uh, and I think Julia's a, a, a particular client here that shines out for that, for that particular reason. Um, currently, we're seeking ways for the first time in approximately 15 years to kind of hand back to um, other kind of community causes, open source, Hoover contributions, um, and we're going to start releasing a lot of our extensions as, as open source extensions as well. I think now's the time for us to kind of step up and um, start sharing a bit of our intellectual property back with the community. Um, and we are branching out into the Sunshine State as of yeah, this month, I think, we are going to be trading in the U.S. officially. Um, so, yeah, we're, br we're branching out from Manchester, which is where, where we are based currently. Um, I think next, next slide. Yeah, so the solution. Um, so with, with Julia's kind permission, we've been able to get, get some key data, um, which might not commonly be available or shared. Um, so we're, we're kind of lucky to be able to do that. Um, this retrofit approach, as we have termed it, is really looking at the opportunities of this uh, fantastic technology to be able to swap in in the most cost-effective manner. Um, what that means is we can simplify a project build so that rather than invoking a complete redesign of a site, then we can do a like for like swapping as a project. Um, so we have a we have a front end design team that are still still really learning a technology that's that's very new. So they will rebuild exactly like for like that they see uh, the, the existing Loom site. And then we pass it to our QA team, who effectively play uh, spot the difference. So that simplified project approach means that we have insight that we believe is more valid because there are no other changes to the project. There's no user experience change, no customer journey change, and therefore the data that we see and the outcomes can be more accurately validated as down to the Hoover project itself, which is very exciting. So the, the data that we've got to share is, um, is we think, more valid. Yeah, so it's a, it's a straight <laughs> swap in. Back to Julia. That's how the swap works. <laughs> it's also that easy, right? Well, yeah. I, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure if it's a good thing to say how short space of time we executed this project, maybe. Um, we, had, we had a developer execute the project in one week. Um, he came back to me with 38 hours worth of timesheets and said, 
yeah, we're done. You're ready for QA. Should we pass it to Julia? And I'm like, hang on, someone's forgot to build timesheets here. What's, you know, what's happened? And it was, yeah, because it was like for like and because I think the, the, the opportunity of, of the business to have very gracefully extended uh, Magento open source well and taken our advice to only customize when was absolutely necessary, then swapping in new technology becomes easier because you haven't got the over-engineered front end that usually adds the risk and cost for future management. So, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so to summarize, we have this sheet, the fast track to how to fast track Google Web Vitals, so do a like-for-like -like change. Um, so, Julia, can you tell us a little bit about the results? Yes, happily. Um, <laughs> I mean, we just launched January 5th. Um, it went very quickly. Like I said, I hardly lifted a finger. Um, we had got it over for Q&A, could not find anything different. It was incredible how seamless it was. The only thing that we noticed was how much faster the pages loaded. Um, and that was incredible because we have a lot of things that take a lot of time sometimes. Um, so the user experience has been great. Um, Got to reveal them now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so like obviously cost per click went down, our bounce rate went down, our organic conversion rate ha was incredible. Um, you could feel that immediately and I know it's shocking, um, but we compared January to January it wasn't you know, January to December, it was year over year. Um, and like Aaron mentioned, this was the only functional change that we made was the Hoover build. Um, so nothing else had changed in our ad campaigns or you know, customer journey process. We didn't have some competitor go out of business. It, like This is exactly what it is. Um, and then our organic revenue was finally clawing its way back to where we used to be and what we were kind of used to seeing. Yeah, so obviously you understand I'm super proud of these uh, results. Um, and I've got to ask Aaron to dive a little bit deeper into what it is that we see that the Hoover uh, implementation has actually brought about. Yeah, so a lot of the slides that I'm about to show you are um, from Google Search Console. I think we felt it was best to look at that single independent third party um, and the thing that's really, um, really has us excited as an agency is really just how rapidly the Hoover implementation appeared to affect the metrics that we see. So page experience, six weeks ago today, the launch, and I think from the data, the, the ramp up you see is, it's a few days after, but that is usually down to the, uh, the revalidation requests. So you, you um, have groups of pages which are identified as not meeting the kind of requirements for good pages in, in uh, Google Search Console. And that goes through a period, sometimes gradual, sometimes significant step changes where you see those improvements and have to kick off revalidation requests. So this is really uh, the process. And it was, yeah, it was six, six weeks ago today that the site launched. Um, so as we can see, the mobile increase was from uh, approximately 15, 20% up to, I think currently is sat about 97, 98%. Um, this snapshot is from a week or two ago. Um, and yeah, onto the, I think on the next slide, we have um, information on the good, the needs improvement and the, the poor results, which really echoes much of the same. Uh, big step changes usually in respect to the revalidation request being processed. Um, and I think that took approximately a week from launch. Um, mobile usability, again, I think on the next slide is uh, just echoing more of the same. So I think interestingly, even for B2B, I think Julia found that the importance of the mobile kind of uptake uh, in terms of organics and rankings is still as key for B2B 
we're seeing as it is for B2C. Well, we noticed that uh, a bunch of articles, because of course, when you see the organic revenue drop $800,000 over a year on year, you're like, what the heck? So we started researching and Google started to rank mobile usability higher than your page authority, higher than your existing things that you had all your, all your T's crossed and I's dotted, we did it all right. And then all of a sudden our site's not mobile friendly. Like we didn't even realize that that had been a, a ranking factor for us. Um, so that became the most important thing to me because I wanted to see us crawl our way back. And then on to um, organic ranking, which I think again surprises more than more than anything that there was such a rapid change. You know, historically, I've worked in SEO kind of for the best part of fifteen years, um, and I've never I've never seen such a direct um, impact on changes from from technical SEO in in, in one sense so quickly. Um, I think as the rankings show here, what we've always found historically is that org technical SEO, good technical SEO, you know, find, finds you in a period of, you know, turbulence where some keywords may move up, some move down. The majority of these have moved significantly up to drive the most relevant traffic, um, most importantly on the keywords that were relevant to effectively your top department landing pages. So all of a sudden it was rich, relevant, not necessarily long tail, but you know, your top, top level departments that were bringing in um, high converting traffic. Um, and, and that is currently continuing to improve as well. So it's, uh, I read an article on SEMrush last week that seemed to back up sites with a greater degree of authority you know so if you've got a bit of heritage and the site's been available it's not a startup uh, you're likely to see a more rapid um, effect from the changes uh, such as these kind of technological performance changes so yeah hopefully that will that will continue great so with that being said uh, we've seen some great results but what's up next okay so this is this is my um this is my uh, attempt at some Northern British humour here with a, You're allowed with to a, laugh. <laughs> this is a theoretical view of what Zero One, my agency, would be doing in 2023 BH before Hoover. Um, basically, improvements, Luma improvements, performance improvements. Um, my analogy is, is an expedition up that mountain. Um, and this is a reflection, really, of what typical activities that we were carrying out as an agency in 2022 um, for most customers, including Bar Display. It was all about performance, and it, it kind of it consumed us. To call it kind of traditional British grit, uh, stubbornness, I'm not sure, but wanting to achieve the best outcome, um, the majority of the work that we were carrying out was really based around um, yeah, taking taking my front end team up an expedition, you know, to, to the top of that mountain, and what should happen next? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, Af what next after Hoover? So a technology appears, um, seemingly from nowhere, um, which was amazing in many ways and it was a shock and it was a revelation it's like why not earlier it's um, <laughs> sorry <laughs> it's like it was it's a savior in many ways to us you know emotionally <laughs> as a business uh, to the platform that we are steadfast supporting and all of a sudden we now actually realize how much scope an energy we have um, for all the other areas of, of e-commerce and delivering feature improvements for customers that kind of we, we didn't realize how we were stifled from you know in the past two or three years kind of working on performance improvements and loom so it's it's really it's really been eye-opening and in, in Julia's case yeah what next it's the exciting stuff for us both I think it's Hoover Checkout um, 
Mage OS, who knows? Um, and, and obviously a new business as well that's been acquired and consumed within, within the existing business. Thank you. Um, so I want to conclude with some key learnings. If you can keep it brief, because I know we're a bit running a bit out of time, but Julia, please. Yeah, I would say you have to find a good partner who ex whose expertise complements um, what you're best at, which just means like, I want to run a business. I want to be thinking about the strategy behind the operations and the procedures and the products that we sell and launching new product lines. And I want to find a, a partner that was able to take my end game and be like, hey, I know you know enough to be dangerous, but let me tell you how the best way to do this is. Um, and so that was my takeaway. Aaron? Um, yeah, I think looking back on all the clients that we've had over the last 15 years, the, the, the success is really, we, we certainly don't see it's down to us, it's, it, it's down to the client understanding when we, when we place resistance to, um, to question whether we should and shouldn't customize a platform like Magento Open Source, then that, that's really the key. It's unlocking um, and, and really questioning when and when not to do that. Um, and if it's done right, and if it's done with the business interests and the, the value of that customization is, is high, then great. But if we can make sure that that is not excessively done, then it makes new technology swapping ever ever more easy, which is a future gain for everyone, and as well as the platform. Thank you very much. Um, I think we have time for a few questions, if anybody has any. OK. Um, so. Uh, at Hoover, we're known to bring a lot of value for not a lot of money. Uh, and so we, today we continue that trend because we brought free t-shirts. Uh, so if you're interested, please find me or my colleague Willem and we might uh, be able to hook you up. I uh, really want to thank uh, Aaron and Julia for joining us today. Uh, I think we've deserved that shot now. Uh, so I hope to, to see you tonight. And uh, yeah, feel free to approach uh, any of us if you have any questions still. Thanks. Thank you.